Hello everyone, we're so excited to launch a new Adobe Live session today and this one is going to be pretty amazing since we're bringing the best of Adobe Max highlights and specifically the new amazing fresco features that will make your workflow much easier. In case you missed uh, two weeks ago, uh, Adobe Max uh, keynotes that went to over 56 hours of live content, uh, let's take a look at, the, at some of the features from fresco in this video. <clears throat> Adobe Fresco, our digital painting and drawing app. When I'm mocking up a quick concept, I pick up Fresco because it serves as this kind of natural medium to capture and express whatever I'm thinking. Over the last year, with so many updates and additions, Fresco has become the ultimate companion for those who paint or draw for profession or for passion. Kyle Webster and Jin Jin Sun join us now to show what's new in Fresco. Hi, I'm Kyle Webster. And I'm Jin Jin Sun. Jinjin and I are here today to show you Adobe's dedicated drawing and painting app, Fresco. Each of us are going to share with you a few of our favorite features, and I'm going to kick it off with the new charcoal brushes in Fresco. Charcoals were the number one medium that people wanted us to add to the app, and I'm so glad that they are now here. I've got a charcoal pencil here. I'm just going to make a few nice marks, and I want you to see how perfect that texture is. It looks just like the real deal. But I can also use this pencil to do shading like this, from dark all the way to really faint. I can make big chunky marks like this as well, but that's only one tool. We have seven charcoals in all for you, ranging from a nice buttery vine charcoal that looks like that to a really gritty one as well and everything in between. But let's take a look at a real drawing so we can really see how much better this looks. Here's a character I'm working on, a little skater kid, and I'm gonna use the charcoal pencil to do a bit of work to round this out. Just come up here on the top of the eye and add a little bit of detail, iris there. And now let's put some shading under the jaw. And are you ready for this, folks? I'm going to smudge that. Perfecto. Look at that. We now have smudging in Fresco, which means you can use any pixel brush to smudge and all the texture is going to be retained. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to draw here with that charcoal pencil again. And I'll even just use my finger to do some smudging right now. Check that out. This is exactly how I draw with real charcoal. All the texture is retained. This looks amazing. Okay, but since we're in a digital painting environment, we don't have to restrict ourselves to just black and white for the charcoal. Take a look at this colored pencil drawing here of this character. All of this was done with that charcoal brush as well. So I can use millions of colors with it to make perfect colored pencils just like this. So now I'm gonna just add a little bit of color here to the trousers and that looks fantastic. All right. Why don't we move on to the multicolor eyedropper tool? The multicolor eyedropper is a revolutionary new tool we have in Fresco that allows you to put multiple colors on your brush anytime you want. If I hold down the touch modifier and then touch anywhere else on the canvas, I'm able to select all those colors at once. They magically jump onto my brush and not just any brush, but I'm now painting with the watercolor. So watch all that beautiful color blend together and flow together just like real watercolors of those famous fresco watercolors you love and i can now paint with them using multiple colors at the same time but there's something else you can do with multicolors that's really cool as well i have this monkey that's hanging out in the jungle here he doesn't have anything to swing from but with multicolor what i can do is just hide that monkey for a second hold down the touch modifier and then grab this leaf that i painted now i'm going to bring that monkey back and now when i paint i have vines for him to swing from just like that so I created a temporary custom brush for this document and gave our monkey something to swing from. It took me a matter of seconds to do that. So the multicolor eyedropper is really a game changer for everybody. Wow, 
That's amazing. I can't wait to try these out. And I have two special ladies with me today who will be working on some of the amazing new features. But first, I want to say hello to our chat community over here. It's so good to see some familiar faces and new faces. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Keith. Hi, Catherine, Tarina, Emma. Uh, it's pretty busy today, so I can't wait to hear all your questions. And uh, if just a reminder, if you are on YouTube uh, and if you want to join us live so we can say hello and answer your questions, do switch to behance.net slash live. Um, and yeah, so now back to my talented guests. Uh, I have the amazing Hazel Mead, an illustrator known for her colorful work and gorgeous goddess series on Instagram. Uh, Hazel has found her voice in feminist and activist illustration, and I can't wait to see what she will be bringing with us today. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Natalie. Hi, everyone. And Rachel, so glad to finally be doing a stream with you because uh, I've been in the works for a little while. <laughs> The one and only Rachel Fresky, also known for her beautiful illustrations, uh, transmitting this beautiful feeling that I call coziness. Hi, Rachel. Hello. How are, you, how are you ladies doing today? Yeah, really good. Good. Exciting to be working together as well. Yes. Of course. So yeah, I know you have some amazing insights uh, on the new tools. You're going to be showcasing some clipping masks, um, the smudge tool, brushes, uh, and of course, text. We can finally, you know, play around with text and uh, put some Adobe fonts in there. And of course, the cloud, which uh, will make, you know, your workflow much easier. So, yeah, please let us know what, what, what are you going to be doing today? Of course. Uh, so I'm going to be spending most of the time looking at the smudge tool and the text tool. So I think there's plenty in there to cover the hour. <laughs> Well, yeah, so for me, I think it's actually worked out really nicely, hasn't it, Hazel? So your like so. usual process uses those tools and I like a, basically the rest of the other tools are really going to help me. So um, it's worked out really nicely. Yeah, I think we're covering everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so because yeah, we'll like I use clipping masks a lot in my work um, and I'd before we did this, I'd have to create like a mask. So I'd color in the layer, create a mask, copy it onto another layer, um, paste it and then draw inside that. So you could still do it before, but now there's just a button <laughs> that I can press and it does it quite nicely. So um, much easier. that has really improved my workflow. So yeah. That's you can like uh, I I also you know I also read that you can also s select so many layers at, at at this point as well. It's uh, yes. Nice. I can do that now, actually, because I've got something that I need to do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> should we, should we what are we doing? I know that yeah. we have something special that we'll be drawing from each one of you today. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we kind of came up with the theme of autumn because it is still autumn. <laughs> and um, so continuing with my goddess series that I've been doing, I was still in the mood to draw some beautiful women. So I'm going to do an autumnal goddess, maybe, maybe the goddess of pumpkin spice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm working on today but with lots of nice glowy features which I'll be showing you with the, with the smudge tool nice. and yeah and then for me I've just been inspired by my life <laughs> recently <laughs> oh, I, love it. <laughs> my, uh, well, I, think, I think what's really nice about autumn is going for all these nice like walks and all the colours so I'm going to try and include lots of different colours um, but this has also got my dogs one going a bit nuts and the other one just being good, which isn't always the case. <laughs> Normally they're both nuts, but I have to give one of them credit. <laughs> I've also just noticed actually that, um, Rachel, you have, your layers are so clean and mine are so <laughs> messy. So I think it's really nice. We've got two different, completely yeah. different um, styles. <laughs> going yeah, on. it's been really useful being able to group them now. So like this one is my, uh, if we go into it, this is like my original sketch, which is really a messy version of the old, the, oh, I have to go back, turn that on. Oh, oh, actually, let me show you how to do, so to group the layers in the first place, I've got two layers here where I've drawn kind of the background and the foreground and the person. So normally I'd just group them together and yeah. Then it's a group. <laughs> it's really stupid, doesn't it? 
Um, but you can do more than one layer, which is amazing. Like before you had to grab one layer and ho hover it over the other one and then pick up the next one and pick up the next one. So it's just so useful. So just do that, press the little thing on the right and then that's it. <laughs> I've got my group. Um, but before, so I, and then I can hide this layer. This is how I start normally, like a really messy version of the same sketch. Ah. I love seeing other artists process. Yeah, that's it's my favorite bit of stuff like this. That's, uh, it's really inspiring because you know you get to see all like the. It's you know I know that you know when you work digitally, you can just control Z or like you know just go back easily. But in for example in in, in Rachel's case and I'm sure in many other artists' cases, you know you can you can still keep what you did wrong and just kind of work over yeah. it. You know? Exactly. That's and I think that's so useful because I find it really hard. I don't want to lose um, work <laughs> personally. Exactly. I'm always. <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. So we're now we're trying out the brushes. I guess this is just um, the brush. Ah, oh, me. Yes. So what I'm gonna do? If anyone's seen me work before, you'll know that um, the way I approach skin I kind of try and get the undertones so it's not just the skin color it's the uh, like adding some depth to the skin so I'm gonna just quickly add a little bit of purple usually I'd spend a lot more time doing this but um, I don't think we've got too much time so for the undertones I'm gonna add some purple and then I'm just gonna add a nice sort of brown over the top and then I'm going to use the smudge tool in a sec to, to add some of this gorgeous sunlight to the skin and blend all these together. So I'm actually going to use the charcoal brush that Kyle was using earlier. Let's just do that. And then I'm going to, um, so just a nice thing about frescoes, you can just uh, hold down on the color you want. And then that's now selected. And then I'm just going to add that over the over the top, uh, the direction of the sunlight. Pumpkin, pumpkin goddess. Is that what, what we're calling her today? No. <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin goddess. Okay. Maybe a little bit of rouge. And then... So I know this must be hard for you, like, to, to multitask, but... Um, yeah. What I mean, what is, I know it's a hard question too, but what is like one of your favorite, uh, you know, features that, that that got introduced recently to Fresco and how, and if you can compare it to, um, you know, how you were used to work before and how, and if this feature somehow changed the way you work right now. Yeah. Uh, so I'll show this a little bit later. Uh, I'm just, uh, so this is the smudge tool. So you're, it's really nice for creating light. So um, and as Kyle said earlier, you can pick any of the pixel brushes. So I'm just using a soft chalk here um, to give a really soft effect to the light. And um, I'll probably work on it a bit more as Rachel explains some other things and I can show you the final result. Um, but yeah, definitely the smudge tool because the watercolor tool is really nice. Um, but sometimes you can still see some harsh lines. So you'll notice here with the sun, what I've done is I started off with a watercolor and then I've just gradually pulled out the color so it's softer and you get this really nice soft light. It looks so real. I know many people will hate me right now who are like pro painters and stuff, but come on. I mean, if we can do this now on Fresco, I think <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I trained originally as an oil painter. Um, hey, that's interesting. So yeah, I mean, look at you, you know, uh, like... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of using this similar techniques that I would use, like building up the colors here. So the shadows, uh, I'm going to do in this purple and then add yeah. the lights over the top in, uh, in the yellow. And then I guess the other tool is text, um, because before my process would be, I would uh, export, so I'd create my illustration in fresco and draw it all there. But because I didn't have text, either I could try some dodgy hand lettering because <laughs> that is not my forte <laughs> or I could um, 
export it to Photoshop and then add text in there, um, which is fine. It's still doable, but it's so much easier having the text options here. So I'm going to show you the magic of it a bit later. You can even like upload your own font or you can like choose from the yes. collection that Adobe has, which is uh, really <sighs> so it's just it's amazing i found it um i've actually used text recently as well to ah. has like a fake version of doing hand lettering which is cheating <laughs> but i don't care <laughs> so sometimes you just gotta what's make the, it easier for yourself <laughs> what's the fake version of hand lettering so i um I, i'd show you it's a save the date for my um but i'll do it in here <gasps> Nice. created a save the day in here for my sister-in-law but if we add some text change this to hello <laughs> really <big. laughs> let's make it big this way oh sorry make it really big i can change the font uh, to be whatever oh quite like uh so this bit always takes a while anyway doesn't it choosing a nice font <laughs> but that's the really nice thing i think because um it groups it into um it kind of gives you inspiration so if yeah it does you want to um a specific feel like it has i can't remember what they are now i haven't got them up yeah and you can just add a new one and then go and look for some more like this it's very quick, very easy. So say if a, uh, maybe that'll do anyway. So just for it's showing even, you. You browse by tags, how like, ugh, this is crazy. I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so that's good. That's all I need. If I pull this and pull it down here so I can show people. Uh -huh. Create a new layer. I'm going to make this a bit lower opacity. And then... I just drew over it. So I uh, go to a pencil. I can just draw over it. Wow. So it fakes. <laughs> but you can do, I think, I'm not <laughs> sure if you can do these around a circle yet. I haven't tried that. Um, but it just makes hand lettering so much easier. Nice. And it is. But then you've still got the authentic feel of your brush as well. Exactly. <laughs> and it. Can you go over the, the font? I don't think so, because that makes it easier for you not to go over the letter. So this isn't using a clipping mask. This is just like, you could do a clipping mask even. Uh-huh. And change so that you've got some texture inside the text as well. Yeah, which is, which is what I'm going to do. When I look <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Here's what we, it's like we planned it. I know. <laughs> Got yeah, this. So it's, yeah <laughs> this is like and then i just use this as hand lettering and it's good to practice yeah. hand lettering as well because you can try out like different styles that you wouldn't come up with normally um and then you've got something that looks a bit more hand drawn than just a font yeah more organic and more you it's yeah exactly so wh what did you say you were using this for um before i use it for a save the date so i did the oh. whole thing in fresca um and then drew over this it just looks a bit more authentic and it kind of goes a bit nicer with some illustrations than just plain old text sometimes in that Definitely. situation so that's it and you know, we had some kind of conversation now on the chat uh, which is people talking about the ipad but um you know as noor on the chat also mentioned that yeah fresco is uh, of course available on the mobile and later on we're gonna be checking out uh the features uh on the iphone so yeah get, get ready for that because i was also super amazed you know because i believe um rachel you mentioned before that you also work you try to work on the iphone uh, fresco on the iphone as well yeah it's really useful just to have with you like sometimes i'm you know if you're out you don't always want to carry a massive ipad with you and you have all because it's got the cloud documents Oh, okay. It's already got, sorry, I'm just looking at my phone now. It makes me look really rude. Um, <laughs> but it's got everything I'm working on now on my iPad. So if I go out and I'm like, actually, this would be better if I did this. Uh -huh. I can just 
make a change or make a note in the thing without because I'm quite forgetful. And so. you can <laughs> on the other platform as well because it saves it it saves it all on one cloud. Yeah. Way. Yeah. So you can open it in Photoshop later too. So that's so handy. So whenever inspiration strikes, you can just on the go. <sighs> exactly. So yeah, I've got my hello as well, really simply. Oh. <laughs> Done. I'll leave it up. Like, oh, there you go. Yeah, so it's just a bit more kind of hand-drawn version of the text that was there, and it's just really easy. <laughs> Make it look nice. So yeah, that one I thought was really cool. One of my favourite new features. I've actually been using the um, Vine charcoal as well, but um, I've forgotten his name now. Kyle. Kyle. How did I forget that? He's such a legend, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> oh my God, I use his brushes all the time. Yeah. Oh, I don't know since, what's going on. Since like uni. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can share the link to his brushes. Because um, oh you can just import them, can't you? So that's what else I was going to say. So recently I got a new iPad and this is what's made. It's made my life so easy. I, caught, I literally got rid of the other one opened up Fresco in my new iPad and everything was there because of the cloud stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also brought across all my library brushes mm -hmm. that I just already had. It didn't oh, save so my handy. favorites, but we can go back. We can change my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get new favorites. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, <laughs> so, you know, all the, the Keith Haring brushes that um, I think Adobe bought out recently. Mm -hmm. all in there. I didn't need to do anything. I loved seeing, you know, all the artists using it in their own ways. That was really nice. Yeah, it was really cool that I love. It's nice to see how other people work as well. Well, that's yeah. what we're doing now, aren't we? <laughs> and exactly. In fact, we have a beautiful comment from one of the chat people uh, saying that they love to watch you both work. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> so kind everyone is so nice in these chats i know what's everyone else working on in the in the community do they have any projects going on it's a good time for personal projects in the uk isn't it oh definitely do you have any planned for lockdown <laughs> lockdown projects and I hope to. yeah it's I a tough it's a tough situation for all of us but you know i'm it's, we're very grateful for these streams, you know, and for art in general, because, you know, otherwise you, ha you have to keep, you know, trying to be creative, you know, and do things, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have something to work on, I think, when the world's gone a bit mad <laughs> <laughs> around you. I think my, one of my, I, I did a stream with Emmy a couple of months ago now. But she, um, oh yeah, I love that one. Yeah, she's so okay. good. But she did a load of um, personal, well, she did a personal project about lockdown last time. And then she had a load of jobs come out of it. So actually it like really benefited her in the long term. And she ended up with having actual work. Of course, it's like, yeah, was, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, Natalie. No, it's, it's you know, um, it's what we always say, you know, especially this year, like, um, you have to work for it, you know, you, you cannot just, it's hard to stay there, you know, like locked in lockdown, you know, <laughs> thoughts and everything. It's always good to kind of just, you know, create things and share them as much as you can, because, you know, it's probably the year that we're all watching, you know, people around. So I, yeah. I of course you can get lots of jobs, you know, uh, if, you know, you just go for it and share your work out there. It's, I think yeah. it's, that was actually um, one of the bits of advice I got um, at uni to that um, it's usually a cycle that like you do your um, personal projects and then you get seen um, by a client that thinks, oh, I really love that. And so they hire you and then you sort of do the client work, you know, so you can pay the bills <laughs> <laughs> and then that allows you to create your own work again and then it's this really nice cycle and I have found that that whenever I'm putting a project out that I love and I'm really passionate about something usually comes out of that so yeah it's really good so it's great time 
I'm thinking positively about this lockdown. This is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we actually have a question from Noor from the chat here, you know, regarding what we're talking about, which is, have you ever dealt, you know, are, are you currently dealing with, you know, uh, with clients canceling work or like, for example, the challenges of being a freelancer these days? Do you have any kind of advice or a personal experience to share with us? I think it's different depending on the industry. So for, because illustration, you can work from home a lot. It's like we can keep getting on with yeah. it which is quite nice but my husband is a cinematographer and he works on like video shoots yeah, and for him cool. it's all yeah it is cool but you know his work's all gone a bit well, it slowed down a bit recently so and during the last lockdown it did so and that's I think that's the time when you work on the personal stuff like we said before like if you can't be creating for clients then yeah because I think also as creatives that's a really um, great work. skill to have because you'll find you're never bored and there's always um, more things you can be doing and more ideas that can come to you um, so I find that has been um, a big help just working on my own things and um, for me personally I don't know about any other creatives or freelancers out there but I always find January is such a dry month work-wise yeah, it always is always and so last year I kind of um, made my peace with it and said you know what I'm just going to work on personal projects and then ne next January I might have completely off we'll see how it goes we'll see <laughs> but um, I'm preparing myself for it now I'm trying to take on as much work as possible in the summer yeah. spring summer to get, yeah that's yeah, exactly get me through the winter <laughs> yeah same as us <laughs> both of us are doing that too so max is always oh, okay that's interesting. january for him is always really quiet and then well i'm having a baby in january so <gasps> january's booked out for me <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i know Rachel, we spoke about that in our last stream together we you know it's it's challenging for you, you know, you know, because, you know, you have this, literally this upcoming project happening <laughs> yeah. in January. And I just think it's so, you know, it's so inspiring, you know, from your side to see you like doing these illustrations and still, you know, getting inspired by the world around you while you're on lockdown. And then you have the baby coming up, you know, in a couple of months or yeah, over it's that. It's, um, it's crazy. It must be crazy for you right now, but I just I think it's inspiring how you just keep creating and creating and sharing your illustrations, you know, on Instagram with us. Yeah, I think it's really I, illustration for me is something that I love. So it's like a I was th I was trying to think about because I think my agent was like, "Oh, are you going to take time off?" And I was like, "Well, I think it's going to be a good break from <laughs> looking after a baby. Like I do it for fun." So. It's just really nice that it's my job as well. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't know. I just love it. So <laughs> it's not the base. It is. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes though. I'll see. Obviously, I have no experience of this first time. So no, we'll you're, gonna, you're gonna be awesome. <laughs> we're all we're all here supporting you and like <laughs> Thank you. vibes. Yeah. Big, yeah. creative adobe family yeah <laughs> it's so nice and it was like the first i think I, I said this in the stream with you natalie that um in the first trimester like you feel awful mm -hmm. and not awful but it wasn't great and then so i was trying i just couldn't think of anything like i was finding it really hard to be creative but since then it's all come back which is nice um and i Hazel, you said that uh, we're gonna put we're gonna put some inspiring quotes today that could also be inspiring. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe we can add that on your illustration. <laughs> yeah. So I had I had two um, thoughts in mind for the text. So perhaps someone in the chat might um, pick one for me. Nice. Like, it's either I was trying to think of something about like the winds of change, and then I was thinking it was a bit too cheesy. So either it's going to be um, oh, what was it? change is the only thing no constant that's constant yeah oh. or 
all hail pumpkin spice. So um, <laughs> whichever, <laughs> whichever people prefer, I'll, I'll put it in. Let's yeah. get some suggestions from the chat. <laughs> what would you like to be the inspiring quote for today? <laughs> it has to be related to pumpkin, change, <laughs> positive. Yeah, because I was thinking autumn, autumn is change. That's that's what inspired that quote. Autumn. Yeah, it is. All the nice colors. Change. Change. Give us your best quote. Or unless people can come up with something completely. <laughs> Have you just added that in? Oh, no, I did. I did this before. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> but okay, no, I'll I'll redo it. I'll pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> I was just you checking look the so time. nice. Like a reflection. Thank you. Yes, I'm gonna do. Ah, oh, so that's what I wanted to show. I just wanted to do like a little um, water, water, watery scene underneath to show show off the smudge tool. Um, okay, let's take that sun color again and just. You hey, can't fake. Can't fake that. Come on, show us. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use the watercolor brush for water groundbreaking. <laughs> um, Perfect. No, that was a Devil Wears Prada reference. If anyone that was <laughs> got that. <laughs> That's it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to. Okay, I think. Well, so far we have a winner. <gasps> Yes. <laughs> it's my to believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Oh, we also have another cute one from John, which is jump and hug the sky. <laughs> oh, that's really cute too. <laughs> it fits with the illustration, yeah. It does. I think both actually. I like I love a pun. I'm a sucker for a pun. <laughs> so maybe we'll go. I don't know. What do you think? Which one do you prefer? Well, we have we have like thirty minutes left, so we can give it some. We can time. do both. Yeah, we can do both. Oh, we can do both if, yeah. if we don't get if we don't get more um, quotes on the chat. Yeah, different versions. Yes, <laughs> versioning. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, good opportunity. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I've just um, just done that, and I'm gonna add little bits of white um i might use the watercolor the round detail brush bring that down a bit just to um, maybe I'll do that. all right i should be talking out i'm just talking to myself this is what i do when i work <laughs> especially when you work on your own you just end up talking to yourself yeah Okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> oh my I'm dogs. just gonna add some ripples. Ah, oh, all my plants. I don't have any pets actually, so oh. I can talk to my plants. So how many I, dogs? I, do I have two the, dogs. Yeah, you have two dogs. Oh, and uh, Hazel, you mentioned that you don't have any pets. No, I just have plants. Plants yeah. are. Plants are. Oh. <laughs> He's a bit broken. <laughs> oh. So Hazel, you did mention also like if you can just give us some insights on the difference between a smudge brush and the mixer. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between and what which one do you use depending? Mm. So uh, we've got all the pixel brushes here, um, which are really nice. And the live brushes are really nice. But and you're the... currently using the smudge brush right now. Uh, so right here, I'm using the watercolor brush. So I'm just adding little um, bits of bits of highlights. Um, but again, what I will do, actually, just to show you a little bit better, I'm going to add another color, uh, and maybe make that a bit darker here. And I'm just going to merge these two layers. And now I'm going to use the smudge tool just to uh, blend that in a bit. No, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. 
what I would do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer group and for the reflection <laughs> oh, see, see this was the trick so I just did that upside down um, I just flipped flipped the whole thing upside down I'm gonna crop it <gasps> and I got these feet uh, and I'm going to no it's not you Yes, I'm just going to take out the line work because um, for the reflection, I want it to be a lot softer. Mm -hmm. yes. And now I'm just going to merge all those together. And now I'm going to use the smudge tool to, I'll zoom in a bit, to just soften the line so it looks more like a reflection. Um, and more like moving water. So I think the smudge tools are really nice for kind of creating movement in water and light. Um, so there are so many different benefits of it. Uh, and whereas the pixel brushes and the watercolor brushes and vector brushes are all kind of additive, um, what the mixer brush does is it just moves the colors that are already there. So you're not adding on extra, extra colors. Um, which I found really useful. And before I'd kind of find, found some hacks. So you can go on the water color brushes and, you know, up the water and decrease the flow so you're not using any color. But this um, it's just a nice option to have in a digital painter's toolkit. That's what I think. Of course, yeah, because uh, a question came up on the, on the chat that mm. many, well, not many, but uh, most of, most, most, most artists, sorry, are not using the vector brush. Is that true? Like, have you used it before? Do you, or do you prefer the other brushes basically over the vector one? Uh, so for me personally, I don't know about you, Rachel, but uh, just because I did train as a painter and I like the more natural feel, um, I really enjoy the live brushes. They're probably what I use most. And then I have a few favorited uh, you know, concept brushes and just pixel brushes that I use. Lots of Kyle, you'll see his name <laughs> pop up loads. <laughs> um, but I did use the vector brushes once because I knew this client wanted um, something that was going to be for social media. And then again, um, wanted something for an album cover and some something for lots of different potential formats. So I knew that that I'd have to scale up and down. And that is one thing about the vector brush, because I'm not I'm not a fan of Illustrator. I just don't get it personally. I did a course in it and it still didn't sink in <laughs> to my head. <laughs> um, but with the vector brushes, they're really easy to use. So you still kind of draw with draw with them. Um, but then it so it separates it on a separate layer and then you can uh, scale it up and down as much as possible so it is a bit easier but personally yeah I don't use it that often no I didn't use it or I think for it depends who you like how you work as an illustrator because mm. um I think I watched was it one that you uh live stream with head uh, he's called head off on Instagram yeah yeah uh, yeah so he does like his work is vector based so I think for him like it would work really well um, and if I guess if he can sketch and then pull it over to Illustrator maybe. Um, yeah that was a very cool session actually it was super yeah cool. for those who haven't had the chance to watch it you can still find it on Behance of course on Behance Live. Um, yeah he showed some kind of super like vector based techniques uh, and you know how he was changing the colors it was just like yeah it was just a different kind of technique that he was using. Yeah, he had the tool that the vector brush, the vector tool that they just showed us on the video. Um, <laughs> he he had like a plugin to do that in Illustrator. Exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> it will probably help him in <laughs> Fresco. I'm not sure. Sometimes yeah, in fact, he did not. I don't think he. It's like to cut off the edges nicely. Uh -huh. It's just like it makes the drawing much easier. Like while yeah. you're drawing, illustrating, yeah. Yeah, so I think it would do a similar thing, which would be quite cool. Um, so I think it is. It depends what you how you do it. So I I did like the one of the Adobe oh, projects 
that they had in the last lockdown. Um, I can't remember what it's called. The residency thing. Uh -huh. I did one of them and one of the other, yes, one of the other, so the community fund, that's it. The One of the other girls who did it, she works all in Illustrator, but hers are like more shapes. But this actually probably gives you more of like a natural feel to your shapes, which yeah. I can imagine would be really nice. Um, but it depends how you work. Yeah, of course. All, all, all different. Yeah. <laughs> which is what's so beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, of course, it was, it was makes, you know, each illustrator unique, you know, and by the way, they they use different the softwares and everything. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm ready to add text yeah. if anyone has any suggestions. Okay. Did we pick, did we settle on one? So we do have another one, which is heads in the clouds, feet on the ground. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, we could, we have. I look. need to channel more of that in me personally. <laughs> I have my head in the clouds all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, we could we could go with Tim's one. Belief in yourself. I don't know. Up to you. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so the nice thing about the text tool in Fresco is that you just click on text, and then you can drag it as big or as little as you want, and then you can still resize it to something that's an even number, just for my own think. <laughs> Let's do 160. You do it on and a then... TV remote as well. Uh, oh no, what, sorry, a TV remote? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get that either. <laughs> so is, this font, is this your own font? Uh, so yeah. this is my own font, um, oh, which yeah. I, in, I installed today. I wanted to check that it worked. Can you share with us the name so we can, uh, just in case people want to use it on Fresco? Ah, so I can't remember which program I used to. No, the name of the it. font, because I'm sure, because they can use, can they find the font in the collection? No, so this oh, is the sorry. one I just sort of created for myself. So I just have it on, on my computer. I'm, I'm sorry, it's just my hand dragged thing. No, well, hopefully, you know, one day we'll find it in the collection. When yes, I, I yes. <laughs> but I need to I need to get better at making them first, I think. <laughs> uh, oh no, what are we doing? Leaf. Uh-huh. <laughs> um and yeah, so I just created this font, just uh, I think I just Googled create your own font. I think there's probably a much easier way of doing it. I think Adobe's got something now. But I can't remember what. I think you can do it in Illustrator much easier. Uh Font self, that was the one, thank you. Font self is the plugin that you can do. But I didn't use that. I went the long way around and I just Googled create your own fonts, came up with this thing. I wrote out, I printed out the sheet and you had to yes. write every letter. I've done um, that. <laughs> and then scan it back in. Yeah. <laughs> and then it gives you your own font. And so then I installed it on iFonts in... Um, we should definitely make, you know, talking about that, we should hopefully, you know, we'll make a, a stream regarding how to create a font. Oh, definitely. And I will watch it <laughs> <laughs> to do it better. Um, and so I'm just going to pick um, a thick, a thicker font for this because I just wanted to show you something really cool you can do. Mm. So I'm just going to create some random texture, I think. Uh, I'm going to go back in with the watercolour brushes. And increase the flow. No, I want a different colour. Are we adding textures to the... Are we going to be adding textures to the font? Yes, 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 yes. Um, because I think it's really fun. And again, another way to make it a bit more you and a bit more, uh, so the so the text will sit a bit nicer in the illustration as well. And of course, blended in the illustration. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm just gonna pick some of the colors we've already used in the picture. And then I looked up and I was like, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cloud, it's a big <laughs> brown cloud. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm gonna, I think method. I'm gonna take one of. Oh, we do have a. Oh, yes. 
Can you add a text? Can you add text to a path in Fresco? Can you add what? Sorry, text. Text to a path. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. Does anyone know? No, you no, can't add text to that. No. I was just thinking that would be really nice earlier as well. <laughs> Maybe ah. the next one. No, yes, no, because actually usually or oh, often I do kind of like to arch, arch my text. Um, so for now, I think I'm going to keep doing that in Photoshop. Um, so you, but right you now, have brushes, right? Like it's just a brush and you, um, to add the texture. Uh, yeah, so you can create any texture you want, really. Um, so I'm just going to do this. And then all you do is you see the button to the right and it's uh, sort of the arrow down. I'm trying to point it on the screen. You can't see that. And then you just oh, wow. you'll see the texture in oh, the lovely. font which is quite nice. And then you can go back in and edit that texture or add different colors to it. Clipping yes. mask. Mm. Clipping mask and font, which is just quite a nice little handy, handy thing to have in Fresco. Yeah. It looks really nice. Thank you. I'm trying to see yours, Rachel. Yeah. yeah. So stream, I was just my box literally is so getting, small. <laughs> getting to a point where I can do clipping masks as well. So I can tell you oh, how exciting. Easy. Yes. It's, it's, it's really is like we've planned it perfectly, oh. isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to have a we sip did. of tea while I watch you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I was, I'm thinking, I want to add some like patterns to stuff. So I think it makes stuff a bit more exciting when you add a pattern. And normally I always go for stripes because that's my life. I yeah. just wear stripes with everything. Um, I'm thinking the jumper needs stripes. So if I just create a new layer, click the little uh, mask, what's it called? Clipping mask button. <laughs> just how to do stuff. Um, we might go white for this, not that. I'm gonna have a pencil brush. I can just go through and it put, keeps it within the lines. And I can do this. Then it just, Gives Brilliant. it a bit more character as well, I think. I love um, it. Yeah, and I also use this for shading too. So if I add another one on top, I can put like, so when I go through and have, I might use, see Kyle's, Kyle's brush. <laughs> there he is. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we love him. Hope no. he watches this. Say thank you to him. So now you're using the clipping mask tool that will allow you like to do some shadowing as well. Wow. Yeah. So I would normally go to overlay, have it on like a dark brush, drop the opacity a bit. And let me get rid of the um, sketch. So I can go in here and add this for a bit of shadow in the right places. Um, and then I can also drop this or increase it, depending on how much I want. Have some shading around the bottom. Um, I guess as a in a similar way, you can well you could do smudge and yeah. mush about with it like that. This is just how I'd normally do it. So <laughs> lots of layers and different technique, yeah. So and then the same for maybe the hot this jacket I can add some oh. oops smudgy <laughs> <laughs> change it to the overlay drop that just so it's not as crazy and then add some of this in and here yeah. simples so Rach we have a, a question from you for you actually yeah. uh, Stuart is asking if you've ever illustrated your work into your skis or snowboard gear. I haven't. I'd love to do that. So Stuart, mm. I think he knows me and Max from. Um, Looks like it because I'm, yeah, because you you apparently you used to do that in the industry. Is that right? Yeah, I used to. Um, so I used to be a semi-professional freestyle skier. So I had oh like my God. such a rat. 
I didn't, it didn't happen for me. Like I wish it did. <laughs> but I was too old when I got into it, but it was so, and I've done like lots of ski seasons abroad and things like that. So that's so, so cool. It is, a, it is such a nice life. And that's what else, something else I was like, January's, cause it's always rubbish. We were gonna go <laughs> and stay in the mountains for a month. <laughs> that's my other option. Oh, but can't do that this year. And also, so I'm a bit busy. Um, but yeah, so I haven't, but I'd really love to design some skis or something like that or a snowboard because people just, loads of them have got really pretty designs on. You should, you should totally do that. Yeah. Maybe a for, for next year. Yeah. I've got a friend <laughs> that makes them actually. Maybe I'll contact him. <laughs> there we go. Oh, a project has been but, born. Yeah, it has. This very stream. This is going to be my personal project. <laughs> You know, nice. as we have like around 10 minutes left uh, and while we wait for Rachel to finish her beautiful illustration, let's check out uh, the, the features for iPhone, well for phone, any kind of phone, for Fresco. Let's check it out in this video right now. <clears throat> I'm so excited to share my favorite features on Fresco. First up, I want to talk about capture shapes. So these are custom shapes that you can stamp into a document. So I'm going to open my shapes panel here, and you'll see that I have all of these flowers that I created earlier in Adobe Capture that are now available for me to use in my library. So all I have to do is put this in place and hit fill to stamp it. It's that easy. From here, it's also really simple to make this smaller, put in different locations, just like that. So that's flat color, which is really useful, but that's not all I can do with this. So I'm actually going to turn this into a large background element. And instead of using flat color, I'm going to turn this into a mask. So now that I've done that, it's really easy to use different colors and different brushes all inside of that same shape. So here I'm taking advantage of the beautiful color blending and bleeding that we get with Fresco's watercolor brushes. So that is capture shapes. So many great possibilities for custom shapes in your artwork. Next up is vector trimming. So anything you draw with vector brushes in Fresco stays sharp at all sizes. Vector trimming makes it really easy to cut vector lines where they cross each other. So if I were drawing a stripe on the zebra without vector trimming, and I overshot the line, I'd have to go in, use the eraser tool to very carefully erase this right up to that original line. I'd probably mess that up, have to go fix it. That's not how I want to spend my time today. Instead, I'm going to use vector trimming. So I'm going to zoom back out and just toss some lines in really quickly. So I'm just throwing these in, totally ignoring those boundary lines I was being so careful with earlier. And now I'm gonna activate vector trimming using the touch shortcut and just cross out all that overage that I don't want. And just like that, I've got a perfect trim right up to that boundary line. All right, so that is vector trimming. Makes it so easy to clean up your vector line work. So Kyle and I have shared some amazing features so far, but I've got one more thing and I've saved the best for last. Inspiration doesn't always strike when you've got your tools at hand. But what if there was something that you're probably already carrying around with you in your pocket that you could create with? And that's why I'm so excited to share that Fresco is now available on the iPhone. When I open this, you'll see all of my cloud documents that I was just working on my iPad are already syncing across to my phone. And when I open up a document here, you'll see I've got all my tools, all my layers, everything I need to create some beautiful artwork. So I'm going to hop into full screen mode here to finish the sky. Look at that. I'm using watercolor on my phone. And from here to finish it out, I'm just going to add a little bit of sparkle using our sparkle brush. So that is Fresco on the iPhone. It's available in the App Store today. Thank you so much. And back to you, Scott. Thank you, Jinjin and Kyle. Charcoal brushes, multicolor sampling, vector trimming, those are just a few of the amazing new features. That's absolutely great. I want to I wanna have it on my phone right now. I want to download the app. <laughs> have you, uh, I know that, um, I, Hazel, you haven't tried it out yet, the app on the phone. Uh, I don't have an iPhone. 
unfortunately. Oh. Um, so I don't know, maybe I have to do another purchase. But like Rachel, I bought an <laughs> iPad just so I could use Fresco. So I think it'll be a little while before I get a new phone. <laughs> Rachel just got the iPad for the new features on iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Dedication. <laughs> Clear, it needs to happen. Wow. The um on your phone, I think the thing I the only thing I'm like worried about on here is having a fat finger. <laughs> 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 I just like I don't think I think it would be really good for like on the go ideas and things like that. And that's I think I'm really gonna use it for that. So if I'm out and I'm like, oh that person looks cool, you know, if, like I love I love taking little sketchbooks with me. I haven't done it in ages, obviously, because no one's around. Yeah. <laughs> really, to like draw people in a real life but I can imagine you know just going out just having that there being like a quick you know posture sketch or something like that um and then coming back and doing it in fresco afterwards I think that would be really good so so useful as well uh if you can sync up all your uh documents with the cloud because yeah. then um just on the go you might have an idea and you can quickly edit it or something exactly, yeah, exactly. You find your files everywhere instead of like you know it's, it's i think it's fascinating this feature like you can just yeah. your files in just one account wow yeah i'm wondering as well actually if you know like in a more of an in-house type role if you are using the versioning and uh, caption is it captioning commenting Commentary. Um, yeah, if you can do that on the go, like that would be really useful to have that in the app and then you can just open it up and see what people have said. Exactly. I think it's ah, that would be so useful. You know, for those who weren't able to see that feature, or of course you can find it all on the blog. Uh, but now like commenting and the, the ability to also live stream right there, right from the Yeah. The application, I think it's so good because you also I mean you're not only working for yourself, but you're also like working with the community and you're getting like feedback from everyone and even like maintaining this engaging conversation which is you know it's, it's what we need right now you know in, in, the, in the situation so yeah exactly. just efficiency as well especially with that commenting feature you don't have to constantly be emailing people yeah like oh what do you think of this you can how just um do you think your how would your clients react to that because i'm not sure <laughs> Would you have <laughs> you know, like in a freelance sense, I think it's a bit different to like in-house. Um, I can just imagine it being a bit like, here, go and log into this. <laughs> I might try it because, um, yeah, because yeah, you can just send them the file and they can open it up and they can add a comment, I believe. Hmm. That could be uh, useful we, then. Yeah. Uh, and then you can say yeah rather than like, having everything on emails hey yeah, i think it's I tricky hate, though i hate the quote <laughs> <laughs> and it can, um, what are you thinking <laughs> are there uh, and then you can send that to <laughs> yeah i have very nice clients actually yeah. <laughs> um, but then they can then come in and um say oh yeah maybe we should change the quote um, yeah and then that will pop up here. So you'll see their response and then you can reply to them. And then when things are resolved, you can um, click on the three dots here. And once you've dealt with that edit, like, oh yeah, maybe we'll change that quote. Um, you can change it and then just press resolve and then it will disappear. So it's just a very useful feature yes. totally. to have. But I'll, I'll try it out and see uh, our feedback. <laughs> next no time <laughs> be continued um look at that oh. beautiful Rachel wow I love the colors he's uh, there's a bit of there's a way to go with this sadly I wish I could do it quicker I like it I sort of cheated I did um a little bit beforehand yeah I saw that <laughs> sorry <laughs> pop-ups I thought I'd put do not disturb on mm -hmm. it didn't work um I was gonna ask <laughs> did you create those like leaves on yours um, is that leaves in the hair? Uh, Did you use that brush thing that they've? Yeah. Oh, so okay. What well, before we Come go? On, yes. I, okay, I'll share it with you. Um, but I think this is one of Kyle's as well. So he's got a concept concept brush pack. Oh, 
Oh, cool. Oh, my God, it's so useful. So I use it for clouds all the time. Um, so I'll show you some of my favorites. Hazel's concept art hacks for clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. Uh, a really nice to add. Um, but I, so I used foliage too. And, um, wow. Oh, so pretty. Done. Yeah. And it just, um, this is a really nice brush because it, um, I don't know what the word is, when it um, alternates between the colours. So it, it gives you vari yeah. variants of that colour. That's so nice. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I was just thinking I could use like the... Um, what they showed in one of those videos for the leaves so i could have like a sorry we've got like two minutes a minute oh it's done like this kind of thing and then um, you hold this down and this down to make a brush out yeah. of that and then no nope. you know what i think this is my favorite feature on fresco I show yeah. everyone. It's just the. It's so. Mm, Is that how it works? As well. Because I haven't actually used it properly, but I was thinking it'd be really handy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have to go to the basic. Any of these got yeah. And then I, oh, <laughs> if I didn't have a background thing, <laughs> I can just go and put my things in other places. Mm. Ah. Yeah. I you can that. create a nice stamp. Yeah. That way too. I love it. That's so cool. So can we have both of your yeah, both of your drawings so we can see it on the screen next to each other? Not done yet. Oops. I'm not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> Another hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I love this color. It's, it's one of my favorite thing in November, to be honest. Well, in autumn in general, I love it. <laughs> just the colors. Yeah, I just I thank love you. this color, and I'm sure also the chat community and everyone who was watching us. Thank you so much for sharing with us the features. Um, and you know, I loved seeing how you're developing your work with these new tools. Um, and hopefully, you know, we will see more more things. Hopefully, on from the iPhone uh, and the next streams. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us, ladies. It's been absolutely fun and inspiring. Uh, I just want to say also thank you to all the chat community and the online uh, viewers who saw us today. If you want to keep the conversation going, uh, do meet us in Discord. Uh, you will find the link on the chat in a few moments. Yes, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. We're live every day from uh, 12 to 1 uh, and I will see you girls soon, hopefully. Thank you so much and yes. have a lovely day. Thank you. Thanks so much Thank for hosting. Bye. Bye.